Hello, everybody. I uh, wanted to uh, bring some to you from the Word of God and uh, something to think about. Uh, it's kind of a revelation that God gave me. And, you know, the world talks about goats, right? Greatest of all time, right? That's the world perspective, right? But when you get to the Word of God, goats are not really good things or good way to describe people. And he shows you the difference between the world and the word of God, right? And it says in Genesis 38, 11 through 30, it talks about Judah and sexual immorality, right? And, and he offers a goat, right? He offers a baby goat and it's a young goat, right? A baby goat. Baby goats are called kids. They call them kids. That's where we get the word kids from. And this is what I wanted to talk about, right? It's about why do we call our children kids? We should be called. The Bible never calls us goats. Never calls us kids. The Bible never refers to us to goats. Only wicked and evil things, right? And so Genesis 38, 11 30 through 30, Judah gives a baby goat or a young goat to uh, he thought is a prostitute, which was actually his, I think his daughter-in-law. Right, his wife died, and all these, all this stuff happens. Right, a lot of Hebrew culture stuff, but that, but it was sexual morality being tricked. But at the same time, he thinks it's a prostitute. So, and he gives a goat. So, what does it mean, right? Sexual morality. Goats represent sexual immorality, right? And and also it says uh, right here in Exodus twenty three nineteen it says you should not boil a young goat in its mother's milk a young goat in some uh, translation says kids do not bear do not do not boil the kid in his mother's milk right which means means the children shouldn't have to suffer for his parents sin because goats are represented as sin sinful uh, prideful. Uh, strong headedness, like a bull headed, right? They, they, they want to do what they want to do. They want to be the leaders. They don't want to follow. That's why we're called, referred to as sheep. We're supposed to follow the shepherd. But goats have a hard time. They are always single mindedness. They're always doing what they want. They're strong willed. They're stubborn. They don't want to listen. And, uh, in Judges 15, 1 through 20, Samson goes to give a, the father of his wife a goat, but she marries her off to another. And all kinds of stuff happens, all kinds of bad stuff happens, right? Once again, goat was represented of nothing good. Sa uh, 1 Samuel 19 verses 13, it says that King David, when Saul went to go get King David to kill him, his wife made a, a body, an idol, a body, and pretending was sick, put goat hair on the head and made him look like he was sick, but he snuck out, right? Which represents uh, deception, right? Goats represent sexual morality. It's lying, deception. There's nothing good it comes of the uh, way the Bible portrays goats. Satan is depicted have the goat's head, right? Nothing good of a goat. So why do we call our children kids, right? It says right here in Matthew 25, when the son of man comes to his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them one from another as a sheep, as a shepherd, dividing his sheep from the goats, ready? His sheep from the goats, right? And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left will right with God, the sheep, and the left get left behind, and that's the goats. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you blessed of the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, and I was thirsty, and you gave me drink, and I was a Stranger, and you took me in, and I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me, and I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did you, we see you as a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did, you, when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, well, Surely I say to you, 
you, you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those on the left, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for that devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger. You did not take me in naked and you did not clothe me sick. Clothe me sick and in prison. You did not visit me. Then they will all answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them and saying, as surely I say to you, and as much as you did not do it to the one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these I will go away and these will go away into the everlasting punishment, but the righteous will have eternal life. I'm just saying, no one in the Bible that says goats are good. The world standard is the greatest of all time. Right, but Satan is depicted having a goat's head, right? Satan is depicted as a goat. So Satan is the god of this world. And the world says goat means greatest of all time. But the Bible says that goats go to hell. So why do we call our children kids? Satan has already entered our speech. We're already calling our children sick. They're sexual immorality. They're deceivers. They're strong-headed. They don't follow God. Surely think about what we say things. Words have power. Power of the Holy Spirit. Right? But Satan has power too. Satan has power too. And we sit there and we don't think that. We think that we don't. We, we're, we can outsmart Satan, but really it's the word of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. We need that in order just to compete. Us, personally, God don't need us, but it's called us. Amen. Amen.